Thanks, Josh. Hey, guys. Welcome to Wake Up Missoula. Wake up. Yep, wake up. I'm Scott Ramp. Get up. I'm... Get up. I'm Josh. Awesome. My name is... <laughs> I, always, I mean, like, uh, it, it, no one ever gets used to it because I've had other uh, um, co-hosts on here before, and every time they're like, hey, guys, welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm Scott. And I just, like, turn to the other person. I'm just like, I'm well... Good. We I'm need time good. now. Yeah, hey. Having a good morning so far? You have any yeah, trouble yeah. sleeping? I had a lot of trouble sleeping yeah, the other night. I don't know what was up going on. Like five hours ago. <laughs> yeah. Well that I mean honestly I think it has to do with like the uh, shift in temperature for sure because we're also, having a lot warmer days. Uh, daylight savings kinda of threw me off a yeah. little bit. I lost a whole hour, so like yeah, when you you what you used to staying up a certain amount of time later like I on. I could have been waking up at two a.m., but instead I ended up waking up at three a.m. Yeah. Um, but no, it was cool. I got some time. I cooked some chicken, marinated some steak. It was good. Nice. Good time. Sweet. Well, you can expect uh, more sunshine and uh, warmer temperatures on the horizon as we go into this week. We can see as high as forty degree temperatures happening this Friday. It is currently 27 degrees outside. Oh, Today might be the last day to really get that snow in because it looks like there's that snow is likely a 70% chance of snow happening today. But then the rest of the week, it's going to be mostly partly cloudy, sunny, and all that stuff. And all we got to wait until uh, to the earth to shift to the summer cool, months cool. and all that stuff. Yeah. So it's only going to get warmer from here, even yeah. though it's been pretty much a, a dirty tease this whole entire time. Yeah, let's get a little closer to that sun, guys. No. All, right. all right, so if you haven't already noticed, a couple of these toys just kind of around here now and again. We got a bunch of new uh, cool toys uh, for our Saturday drop-ins for our stop animation. Um, if you have a kid who is between the ages of 9 and 13-ish, and I mean ish because you can always ask about um, deals for anybody who's like maybe 14, maybe 8 or 6, because we've had some younger kids in here. A lot of times siblings work well. We have a new deal where we're offering, um, it's $10 per kid, and then we're basically going to copy and paste from like Bismo Gym Gymnastics to say $15 for siblings. So if you have a sibling, it's $15 for siblings, so uh, if you have like one, two, three kids in a family uh, around the same ages, so you have like two sets of twins, that's $15 for four kids. Dude, my family could save so much money. Yeah. But of course, you know, it's the 9 to 13 age gap right there, so you know, oh. that's... That's just how it is? Oh, I see. Yep, so that's kind of like the deal. If you want to learn more, you can go to MCAT.org. But let's talk about some news that are happening. Uh, if, you, if you haven't already heard, if you've ever uh, been to the if, courthouse or you've ever had a misdemeanor or a DUI or anything like that, um, you paid a processing fee that has been deemed unconstitutional by the Montana Supreme Court, and you're entitled to a refund. So anywhere between 5 and 75 bucks in the last 15 years, um, used to process paperwork and hire staff to additional hours to fill out the paperwork, dealing with all the crime that is in Missoula, Montana. Um, they're basically doing this. In September, the Montana Supreme Court ruled that the city of Missoula had overstepped its authority when it passed a resolution adding surcharges to uh, convictions on state law violations. The lawsuit mm -hmm. that climbed to the Supreme Court and resulted in the ruling identified in the 2013 resolution passed by the city council to use those surcharges to help fund the city's attorney office. There was uh, 61,000 uh, lines of data to review on only the five-year look-back period. So they are understaffed, and they can't necessarily do um, any additional charges for processing these things. So it's going to take a lot of time to do this. And so far, there's 108 refund requests left to process as of Monday of this week. Wow. So if you have... Um, if you have a, uh, if you were guilty or innocent for anything, you <laughs> seriously, like anyone who's guilty or innocent, accused? Uh, you, yeah, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> it really doesn't matter if you're guilty or innocent in the municipal courts, in the um, in the local area, you're entitled to a refund. And Billings is following in suit as well. All right, so. Um, of course, you know, Billings also kind of took a note from Missoula's surcharges, yeah. and then they're now kind of doing their own refunds as well. So it's okay, kind of a, a, a domino effect. It's a good change. It's yeah. Solid. Oh, yeah, but it's also kind of like an embarrassment if you really think about it. Anyways, moving on. Uh, a proposed copper mine near the Smith River may not be as harmful, according to developers. Uh, yeah. the, Black, <laughs> the Black Butte Copper Project has undergone an environmental impact study by the Montana Department of Environmental Quality, uh, otherwise known as the Montana DEQ. The proposed under, uh, underground mine is on private land and would extract 15.3 million tons of copper-laden rock and waste over
over 15 years, roughly 440 tons of copper-rich uh, con uh, con um, concentrate a day. It is located in the central Montana near Sheep Creek, a uh, waterway, I gotta say that really slow so you don't misinterpret, uh, a, a waterway that feeds into the Smith River <laughs> some 19 miles away. Conservation groups have strongly opposed the mine, saying mining pollution would threaten the river system and could lower water flow as much as trout fishery would be harmed. Mine, operati mine operations would use groundwater and reduce the flow by 70% uh, to the nearby Coon Creek, um, but the effect would be uh, uh, countered by pumping water into the creek from a planned reservoir. So that's kind of what's happening there. Public meeting on the environmental impact statement are planned for April 29th in Livingston and April 30th in White Sulphur Springs. So if you want to have voice your concern and your opinion, you can go to those meetings on those dates. Again, it's April 29th and the 30th. First one's in Livingston, the next one's in White Sulphur Springs. National news, Hal Blaine, you might know, not know him, but he just died at age 90. He was one of the most prolific drummers, most recorded drummers in history. Uh, 6,000 singles, wow. uh, 35,000 sessions. He played with Frank Sinatra, Elvis, Dean Martin, uh, To the Birds, and of course he did the, uh, a long Beach Boy stint in the 60s. So if you ever listen to a Beach Boy songs and you hear the drummer, that's Hal Blaine. Um, he was a key member of the Wrecking Crew, which is a close-knit group in Los Angeles session uh, of musicians that played hit records during the 1960s. Blaine claimed to have invented the name as though the musicians were a destructive force in the um, conservative uh, studio environment of the time. Sorry, what was that? Uh, a conservative studio. Conservative studio, sorry about that. No, Blaine, no. I'm just reading it too fast. That's Blaine right. was inducted into the Rock and Roll Roll Hall of Fame in 2000 as a sideman and a, and in 2018 received a Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award. That's dope. So of course, um, one thing that's happening um, that happens annually, but DC and Warner Brothers uh, have um, tacked on their uh, logo for the 80th anniversary of Batman, is their, uh, the release of 1.5 million bats at this year's SXSW. Um, but of course, it always happens in Austin. That's the thing. It always happens in Austin. It's been happening forever in Austin. Yeah. It just happens that DC and Warner Brothers are just like, we're doing it now, even though that they just do it by themselves. Where do they get the bats from? The bats always come to Austin. Oh. Like, have you ever been to Austin? There's no uh, mosquitoes or flies or anything like that because 1.5 million bats migrate there. I'd rather deal with the mosquitoes, yep. I think. But here is a video kind of shows you uh, the bats and a little bit of information. So when I come back, I'm going to be talking about some more MCAT stuff. So stay with us. Yep, abruptly moving on, <laughs> let's, uh, let's uh, talk about some MCAT stuff uh, before I get into some city council stuff as well. But um, if you are interested in coming down to MCAT and learning about what we're all about, creating your own show um, for uh, television and YouTube, you can come on down to MCAT, MCAT.org. Um, Spring Flicks, uh, this is a great opportunity for kids, again, age 9 to 13. It's a spring break camp, so for some of the parents who aren't going with their families uh, during spring break, this is a good opportunity to have your kids uh, keep busy during the spring break holiday week. So if you want to do that, it's $150 for a whole week. It goes from 9 to 3 p.m. We have some early care starting at 8.30 as well. But also, we started a new thing here at MCAT. It is a tour. So if you have a group and you want to tour MCAT, you can um, sign up on MCAT.org. All you gotta do is click on the link. You might, uh, I, well, it's not on how do I yet, but you can always go to the MCAT tours right here. But once again, I want you to remind you guys that you can always like us on many of those social medias, but also wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. Look at this picture. I just chose this picture from the video. It's like you're kind of leaning there nice, while I'm talking yeah. about uh, Shazam. That's my <laughs> standard pose. Yep, so if you are interested That's in learning more about Wake Up Missoula, you can um, find me on Facebook, 
the Twitter, and you can always the Google me at Wake Up Missoula. Okay, so we got a bunch of new programs that are airing on MCAT. Um, here is a bunch of new programs. Was well, the building here? No, the building was actually a historic ranger's cabin oh. from the Bungalow Ranger District on the Clearwater National Forest. And you can see on the side of the building how the logs are, are cut. This cabin is just one exhibit. Right. So we're a national museum. We're based here in Missoula. And this is our campus site that we're developing. However, we do work all over the United States. Wow. We have a collection of about 50,000 artifacts. We make those available online. Um, we also do exhibits for other museums. Because people felt like they were indirectly aiding the war effort. So you can actually see, you might have to come up after, but right here is a picture of the site we're on, which is the Victory Garden right here. And then this is the modern, where the brewery is. You can see the, you know, the going up the valley. It's kind of cool to think about. So our modern version of this Victory Garden Many of you may be aware that we actually have a solar array on the building over here. We have 189 solar panels. So we're not farming vegetables, we're farming electrons. So we're trying to contribute to the war on climate change, um, like this site was contributing to the war in Europe, um, which is pretty cool. So we have 189 solar panels on the roof. Um, eventually, we're actually going to have a little um, tablet in the foyer over here that measures how much electricity has been produced on site. So you can come in and grab a beer and see how much energy is being produced out here. Real chores. By the way, there was one other, a, a very fine aircraft design that did go into production by the Focke Wolf Company, but was, uh, the, the FW190, but it was a very difficult plane to produce and could never be mass produced in the style of this aircraft. So the Germans have to mass produce the BF-109. They have no choice. They're in a war of attrition. And they don't have any new designs. And it's do or die. And so we'll produce what we can. Now, mass production was easier said than done. Germany is being bombed. German factories are being bombed into smithereens. They're having to go underground. And the Germans are actually putting their industrial facilities into caves so that they can continue to produce in the teeth of a nonstop Allied bombing campaign uh, around the clock. So the, the, the British RAF at night the Americans during the day. British RAF at night, the Americans during the day. Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about some city council. There's three major things that happened in city council today. We're gonna kick things off with a, a quote by a public comment uh, from let me get my notes. This is Ryan uh, Pillsbury is looking to help clean up some of that trash that has blown from the landfill off and towards the highway. There's a fence there that's blocking it, but there's just been a lot of trash in that particular area. So this is uh, Ryan Pillsbury. Uh, Opportunity Resources has a contract to clean up within Republic Services area. Um, however, they do not address the um, trash that's been blown into the MDT quarter uh, between the interstate and that fence. Um, and so I think I send a general email out to the entire council. Thank you to Councilors Ramos, uh, Jones, and Merritt for your replies and helpful feedback. Um, to your points and concerns, Councilor Jones, with the uh, um, access to MDT, I did reach out to Shane Stack for your uh, recommendation. I'm awaiting a response. But um, I know MDT does have a protocol for safe trash collection through the Adopt a Highway program. That area is not adoptable, so this would require uh, special consideration for access from the community. And um, you know, the, this organization hinges entirely on that special consideration. All right, so uh, one of the concerns during the public comment, it was like, you have three different entities. You have the Montana Department of Transportation, you got a private uh, landowner, but then you also have within the city of Missoula. So you have to get permission from a whole bunch of people. You can't necessarily just go up there and start cleaning up the trash because it's quasi on public property, but also state property. So um, one of the things that, uh, so there, I mean, 
So for public service, an NMT will have to give um, consent for a community cleanup. Julie Merritt of the City Council is working with the Missoula County City County Health Department on this issue thus far. Uh, Brandon Washer is another public comment. He reflects on some of the trash that are in this area. So this is him. In the 15 years that I've lived in this valley, I've never seen so much trash blown out of the landfill, nor in the 25 years that I've lived within 30 miles of here. To me, this highlights a huge responsibility upon the city to enact some sort of recycling plan, some sort of program that will keep some of that plastic, if not all of it, from getting to the wind-blown landfill in the first place. So with the city... All right, so that was Brian, Brian Washer. Um, one of the things that uh, Montana definitely does lack is a recycling facility for that recycles, uh, uh, like that processes the recycling plant because we do have metal recycling and we have all those things, but a lot of times it seems like they ingest a lot of the things, but they don't actually process a lot of the materials for recycling. So there's no recycling plant in the state of Montana. A lot of times it has to be put over to Spokane. So if you ever like read a bottle, it literally tells you five cents per plastic bottle and it tells you where you can bring those um, bottles too. Montana is not one of them. So um, the city of Missoula, of course, uh, is um, so far, um, the only recycling is Pacific Steel and Republic Services, but they only accept so uh, so much since they don't uh, accept certain amounts of plastics, and they also stop doing glass as one of those materials that Missoula does not recycle. But of course, anyways, um, um, just uh, want to talk about some other things as well. Um, Let's move on to the next topic. There's no segue, but Missoula Redevelopment Agency was discussed in terms of usefulness, and Jesse Ramos reflects on how the city handled the Stockman Bank downtown, and how, uh, and this is what he had to say in reflection to MRA. Um, the city council does have uh, control over uh, projects that are bonded with an MRA, and that's an important clarification to make. Um, but at the same time, there's also a lot of control that the MRA board has um, with money that, that's just tax increment that doesn't need council approval. And uh, the folks on MRA on the board are not appointed, or they're not elected by the voters. They're appointed um, by the mayor and approved by the city council. And I do think that... Um, if, if um, me not liking the direction of the MRA and me being concerned about some of that stuff isn't a, a good reason to vote against um, her appointment, then I don't know what is. Um, I vote for every one of um, the mayor's appointments to other boards and commissions because I, I believe that that is uh, his right as an executive. But I think that when there's millions of dollars of, of tax dollars being decided um, by folks that are not appointed uh, or not elected by the city uh, citizens, that we have to be uh, have extra scrutiny. And I do think that autonomy and independence is is important as well, and um, the fact that uh, Ms. Brock ran the mayor's re-election campaign I do think is troubling. Um, don't get me wrong, if I was the mayor, I, I'd want something like that too on, on, this, on the MRA board, but um, unfortunately I cannot support uh, her appointment or the $1.5 to Stockman Bank, and again, a lot of this stuff was, habit, uh, was decided before I was already on council, so um, I kind of feel bad. Um, the developer thought they were getting one thing, but I, I think it'll pass anyways, but I cannot oppose, uh, uh, approve uh, those. All right, so Jesse Ramos uh, continued on in his comment saying that um, with the Stockman Bank, uh, they would have built the bank anyways, regardless of the TIF funding that the city put into the uh, bank. But of course, many uh, people, many of the city council members responded to Jesse Ramos saying that uh, without their co contribution through TIF funding, a lot of the uh, material that was demolished in the development of uh, Stockman Bank would have been thrown into the landfill. And the part of the city's uh, um, plan is to uh, have zero waste by 2050, so it's the whole zero by 50, and that's one of the things that they're trying to improve, and a lot of their uh, TIF funding has uh, been Missoula's way of kind of having say in development and trying to prevent any kind of um, any issues in the future as well. So in response, the city said that the money that the city invested in, okay, so anyways, that's pretty much it for that. Yeah, that's kind of like what's happening with that. You know, that's Jesse Ramos. Um, he's he's never really been in support of the MRA. The city did approve on the consent agenda this item and many others, uh, uh, and also reappointing a Melanie Brock, Brock to the Missoula Redevelopment Agency and the 1.5 million Riverfront Triangle Urban Renewal District among the consent agenda. All right, so one of the big things that are happening in Missoula is that ward boundaries are changing. Things are changing in Missoula, and your ward boundaries are completely changing, especially if you are in wards, um, let's see, five and two and four. So if you're any of those wards, because it's kind of like one, two, three, four, 
five and six. So five and six, they're kind of like bleeding into each other. And this is basically uh, what they have to say. This is Mike Haynes, dir uh, di Director of de de Development Services. And this is what he had to say about war boundaries. So what we know when we did this analysis, if, we, if we're doing this in the, the most logical way possible, we know that we're maintaining uh, unchanged wards one and three. Obviously, what needs to happen, and I'm showing the, the sort of clockwise movement of what, happens, what had to happen with the ward boundaries, and that is ward um, uh, four and five needed to grow, Ward 6 needed to grow in size, with the major change being Ward 6 growing into uh, Ward 2, as you can see. All right, so um, of course, you know, Airport Vol Boulevard is the most recent annexation of the city of Missoula, and one of the things that has to happen is that Ward 6 has to go into Ward um, 2. And so uh, with the new boundary changes, um, here is a little more closer view of what are the changes of the ward map. So check it out. Here with the expansion of Ward 4 into Ward 5, uh, and you can see here this is um, in the area just uh, east and, uh, north and south of Brook Street. And you can also see in this location, this is where Ward 4, Five expanded into Ward Six, and this is in the this is Dearborn, this is South Avenue. Uh, so those were the two uh, changes that happened in that that location. And then finally, the significant change uh, was Ward Six growing into Ward Two in this location. And I mentioned physical barrier. We had used the river as a, a, um, a as a barrier in the past. But uh, in this case, um, the only alternative was for Ward 6 to grow north of the river. All right, so that's basically all you need to know about what's happening with the ward change boundaries. Of course, the city approved of the ward boundaries change, just a logical choice growing into the city. Um, one, of the, one of the populations in the city of Missoula that aren't necessarily growing are wards uh, 2 and 3. A lot of those places are not really growing that much out because you can't really move east. The only way uh, Missoula's growing is west. So much of the airport boulevard, a lot of the communities, so it seems like at some point um, west of Reserve Street, a little further up, we'll start be seeing some annexation coming up pretty uh, regularly as Missoula expands and grows. And that's just kind of how it is. Um, most of what the city tries to do is that they're trying to get, keep at least an average about 13,000 people in each ward just to kind of keep an even balance because no ward should have any more people in it, thus, you know, having a, your city council representative have more uh, people and, and more of the vote. And that's just kind of how it works out. They just want a good balance within the city as well. Um, one of the things that uh, some of people suggested that they should add another ward to help um, the expansion of this, um, but quickly it was kind of like pushed aside for this new ward boundary change. So, um, if you're uh, the significant ward change is definitely Ward Six, Ward Six and Two. Big, big, big deal. So you want to double check everything. And you can always look online as well if you want to find out more information about your city government and see what's going on in the city of Missoula. You can go to ci.missoula.mt.us. You can also go here to watch those meetings and more. But if you're ever interested, you can always go to channel uh, 190 to watch the city council. It'll be airing pretty much all week long on channel 190. Uh, today is all the committee meetings, so you guys can check out uh, Public Works. Um, um, admin finance, community the whole, blah, 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 all that stuff. And I'll have that report for you guys on Friday um, about what's going on in Missoula. All right, so hey, Josh, do you want to kick us off uh, for the next segment where we're going to be talking about some yeah. events? Give us some yeah. nice yeah. event music.
Cool. There you go. Scott. Thanks, Josh. That was Josh Cook it. on piano. Oh, I keep on interrupting you. It's like you oh, play music and then you throw it to me and then I, I start talking. Nah, and dude, that's fine. We can just throw it back and forth, you know. Yeah, just have a rapport. Yeah, you know. This, it's it's new. We can just interrupt it, we're, each it's, other. This is new. This is new. I'm fine with it, yeah, actually, yeah. honestly. Yeah. It's just banter. Yeah, just banter. It's just how banter works. So, yeah, how about that um, uh, banter, right? I love it. Yeah, isn't it great where it's you... It's the greatest uh, new thing. Yeah, you just kind of do it just to fill time. Yeah, I dig it. Yeah. Because, you know, th- people got things to do. Oh, word? Yeah. Oh, okay. And then, you know, sometimes people don't. And people just like to, you know, just talk. So, okay, I dig yeah. it. Yeah. People like to go to Sheep Creek. <laughs> I have to say that slow because otherwise you would misinterpret it as something worse. All right. Let's talk about some indoor fun stuff. Um, Wednesday, kicking off uh, all your indoor sports arena type stuff. As the weather gets warmer, a lot of these places become less and less active. But still, if you want to uh, ha- basically go into a padded room where your kids can just do some um, gymnastics and tumbles and jump into foam pits, Mizmo Gymnastics, you got um, Mizzou Indoor Sports Arena, and you got Ru- uh, Rootsacker Sports Center. This all those indoor funds. And also, yeah. of course, uh, YMC. But, of course, they don't do something on Wednesday. They do something for Thursdays. Okay. All right. Empower Place, Food Bank. Um, that's uh, it's Tiny Tales. Um, it's, a, it's a way for kids to get some um, learning with some reading. But it's going to be at the Empower Place a location on the Wyoming Street where the Missoula Food Bank is. So you guys can check that out. It happens every week. Uh, open hours in the Makerspace, Missoula Public Library. Noon to 5 today, they're gonna, they're not, they don't have any th- events happening in there. They usually have a bunch of events happening in the Makerspace area. So this is a great way opportunity for anybody to do some 3D printing, to do some 3D scans of stuff. So if you have something that you want to keep, in a 3D scan, it's always cool because, um, you know, they 3D scan you. You can also basically make like a 3D representation of yourself and put it in a program that maybe you can do some um, SFM, Source Filmmaker kind of deals. Oh, yeah. That'd, That'd be, be pretty cool. cool. Yeah, but yeah, you should totally check it out. They do a 3D uh, printing workshop um, usually Wednesday nights, and I'll tell you about that as they come around. Uh, the future of denuclearization of North Korea. Um, I, you, sometimes you just got to push through that word. Um, the University of Montana UC uh, Center, otherwise known as University Center Center, is going to be in room at 225. <laughs> Um, since Chairman uh, Kim Jong-un and President Donald Trump's historic summit in Singapore, North Korea has suspended nuclear missile tests. Uh, T constructed the ICBM launch facility, uh, demolished a nuclear test site, uh, released American hostages, and sent American remains home. Uh, the Trump administration has postponed it or reduce joint South Korea and U.S. military exercises as well. But unfortunately, the kind of talks kind of like fell through because uh, North Korea still resists providing an inventory on its nuclear program, which is considered the first crucial step towards the final and fully verified denuclearization of North Korea. So this right now they're not saying, event? they're not they're not showing their full hand. It's kind of like they're, they're, they're giving what U.S. what they want, you know, like, you know, you know. Okay. But they're not necessarily giving, um, showing how many nuclear weapons they have or the nuclear program as a whole. Um, it's very interesting because I would never want to be a nuclear scientist in any way. Because okay. in a lot of ways, if you have that kind of knowledge, you are pretty much not allowed to leave the country that you're in. It yeah, kind of feels basically. that way because it's like you could be a risk. So, so they're talking about this at the university center. The yep. center. They're doing it today at noon at uh, room 225, so it's on the second floor. Okay. One of those boardrooms, I believe it's probably KG, uh, K, uh, KBGA, or that area, because those are usually where the rooms are on the second floor. Usually the third floor has a lot of rooms upstairs, but this is just where they're gonna have it. So the speaker is Dr. Uh, Bayong King Yu, uh, Associate Professor, uh, uh, Jizu Han, Associate Professor, Owen Sirs, uh, j- uh, Adjunct Professor, uh, Sei Yup Yi Li, uh, Graduate teaching assistant. How did I do, Josh? Uh, pretty good. Yeah. Honestly, I gotta, I gotta give you a solid seven. Yeah. All right. Scrabble and Bridge. Uh, not talking about denuclearization, but they can probably talk about it during while they're playing this game at the Missoula Senior Center starting at 12:30 ish. Oh, I know they will. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. They talk about everything. So go to the best dance floor in the city of Missoula at the Missoula Senior Center. 
All right, Missoula Public Library, Memory Cafe. Uh, from 2 to 4 p.m., um, it is a welcoming and supportive space for individuals experiencing memory loss, their caregivers, and family members. This month, uh, Caroline Patterson of Missoula Writing Collaborative will be the guest. She'll lead a music and impression writing activity, meets in the large meeting room from 2 to 4 p.m. this afternoon. And of course, Spectrum Discovery is doing a Rube Goldberg machine. Right. You know those things. Oh, yeah. it, or it takes a whole bunch of uh, um, electricity and technology just to do simple tasks. The uh, Rube Goldberg machine is going to be discover. Uh, it's going to be in their discovery bench at Spectrum Discovery Center off their Two Avenue, Eight Twelve Two Avenue. I've been saying this a long time, so yeah. I pretty much have this memorized. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> just like, just like. So, anyways, if you uh, if you like Pee Wee Playhouse, um, Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Remember the whole like Rube uh, Rube Goldberg. Dun 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 Rube Goldberg machines is exclusively from Phineas and Ferb. Mine is, uh, well, my my first experience was uh, Pee Wee's uh, Big Adventure, of course. Oh, okay. um, <laughs> and then the next one was Flubber. If you actually watch Flubber, they also have a Rube Goldberg machine oh, in the very nice. beginning of the movie where it's like. I know, right? Honestly, the, the CGI of the robot floating girl uh, oh, with yeah. uh, is really well done. Even like the whole flubber CGI scene where they're all dancing together. Yeah. Very, very, uh, of course, it's, it's very of its time, but it still looks very good. Because like 96, 97, computer generated technology looks way better than like 2005 yeah, or anything yeah. on Sci-Fi Channel. All right, Girls Rock Camp. I am mentioning this because this is the last time to do a uh, part of their camp because they're going to be leading up into a performance on the Family Friendly Friday at the Top Hat Lounge this Friday. Uh, Zootown Arts Community Center sponsors the Girls Rock Camp, which is very popular um, amongst their many camps there. Um, so popular that they decided to kind of branch out and uh, invite all genders to join the rock camp. But this is their their mainstay, their, their titular um, Girls Rock Camp and they're going to be performing this Friday, and you can see what it's all about. Uh, glass views and orientation, speaking of Zootown Arts Community Center, this is a good opportunity for uh, members and non-members alike to learn glass fusing. You know, glass blowing, they have a lot of um, yeah. activities like that to learn. Um, it's, it's amazing. It's pretty great. Um, but this is just one of many things that they do. Uh, paint your pet. You'll have a pet. Painted with a twist does a lot of fun activities, including painting your pet. And they do this uh, once in every couple, once every couple weeks. Um, you can paint your pet. They'll send pictures of. You can send us pictures of your pet, and they'll sketch them out for you. Um, they paint the nose, eyes, mouth, and the rest is yours to conquer. So they're basic. You're basically. Uh, they they draw the the pet for you, but you have to like color it in, which is pretty oh, cool. Yeah, so if you if you have no art skills, but um, you know. Uh, the basic art steel is being able to uh, color within the lines, and they'll give you the lines to color into. Yeah. Men's a cappella four part harmony singing at River Valley Church. They do uh, this is a men's barbershop um, um, singing group. They're males of any age who can hear a sound or a match a pitch are invited to come to rehearsals. And these are regular rehearsals that happen 7 p.m. at the River Valley Church. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much it for your Wednesday events. Um, if you're interested in doing some trivia, Again, um, trivia nights are at the Press Box, Broadway Bar and Grill, Silver Slipper. Um, you got a bunch of karaoke happening at the Dark Horse Bar. You also got some karaoke at the Eagles Lodge. So much karaoke. Wednesday's like the karaoke trivia night. It's the perfect night to just be out and just kind of use your brain and use your um, singing muscles. All right. We have um, from the Clay Studio an art clip, and this art clip will be going on all month long uh, in the month uh, in the month of March. So if you guys get a chance to go to the Clay Studio, it is very awesome. Uh, their uh, their art gallery itself is pretty small, but their uh, their pot making and all that stuff is amazing. So you guys can check that out. And here is a little taste.
Okay, hey guys, welcome back. And there's Josh. Josh has something to ask me. What was it? Oh, I was just going to see if you saw the Thanos glove, the, if you saw the Infinity Gauntlet in there somewhere. Uh, it, it was later on in the video for sure, but I, I could have sworn I saw... Yeah, yeah, back, back a little bit. Yeah, right there. Is that... Oh, that kind of looks like it's like part of the... Oh, God, I keep on going back Whoa. to you. But yeah, I can see what you mean, like the kind of like the, the, the early parts the... of it. No, I think it's just like a, a picture. Oh, for real? Yeah. Oh, okay. My bad. Yeah. But I can understand why you thought it was the Infinity Gauntlet because My if you really look at it and, and if we take the mouse, yeah, you can see I like mean, these are like the stones. Yeah. It went by so fast that my mind just immediately went nerd mode. So right. Like. But of course, there's, there's something for everybody, yeah. um, and everyone can get a chance to kind of see any of that time, any, any time this month in uh, the, the Clay Studio. Yeah. All right. My let's, dad's potter. Yeah. And your dad also goes in pots as well. Yes. He does make pots. Nice. And, well, more like, you know, mugs. He really likes, he's a coffee drinker, yeah. so he likes making mugs. And yep. I was at um, a Metal Hill last week, and the, all the kids uh, just uh, got back from their uh, their ashtrays glazing. Oh, wow. <laughs> you know, I made my mom an ashtray a long time ago. And uh, recently, uh, when I was, like, moving into my new house, and she was, like, unloading a bunch of, of my memorabilia, I was like, wait, that was for you. And I was, like, offended that she's giving me back the thing I gave her when I was five. Because so, I remember it, and I was like, I, I guys, gave you that terrible ashtray. They had you guys make ashtrays? Yeah, it's like those things, you know, where you have, like, the thick clay, and you make a circle, and then you stack yeah. it on each other, and then you just put it together. It's it's very simplistic. It's not like, you know, like you have, like, one giant smooth. But, like, specifically ashtray. It wasn't an ashtray. Oh, okay. It was basic. Right. Well, that, that's just that's what just they call what it. It, like. okay. it just looked like an ashtray because it was, like, one side was sunken in and whatnot. I was say, that's, what, he just, that's a weird school activity. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure it was just like a container jar, and it was oh, okay. it was used. But then, like, she tried to give it back. I'm just like, what, what are you trying to do? Yeah. What, what, what is the, what, what's this all about? And so, yeah, that was that. That's a little uh, a drama that I made up out of nothing. But of course, like, what do you expect? You know, something that's uh, when it's you're young. Dramatic. When you're young, it's a very you know, like you make something that you give your parents, and it's yeah. like, oh, that's really cool. You know, like it's the kind of encouragement that you want from your parents. But if your parents are just like look at it and it's just like. Psh, I can imagine in their mind that they were just like, oh, great, look at this. Like now, but back then, you know, it's like so important in a lot of ways for a lot of oh, kids yeah. to do it. So you got you to gotta respect the kids' feelings parts. when it comes to uh, hard work and dedication. Yeah. Although I don't remember doing too much hard work on that thing. <laughs> yeah, me, me <laughs> Right? All right, so Thursday, if you want to improve your public speaking skills, Toastmasters are meeting at Perkins Restaurant starting at 6.30 a.m. They just hang out, and then they, they just – there's people who love to talk, and they just talk to each other. They just toast? Yeah, it's a Toastmasters meeting. It's like when you want to give a nice toast to people, it's a good way to um, basically speak well. So could I just come up with anything and toast to it? Like yeah. I mean, it's a Toastmasters, so it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a public speaking kind of thing. So it's a wow. confront your fears and lean in a supportive and fun environment. It's not just about public speaking. You also learn a valuable leadership and listening skills. Wait, when is that? 6.30 a.m. And they meet every Thursday, 6.30 to 7.45. 6.30 a.m.? Uh, yeah, I know, I know. They used to, they used to have a Toastmasters Masters, like, uh, thing that MCAT would film uh, at the Ruby um, Inn. Um, and they would just rent out a conference room and they would just all talk. And then there's always that one guy in the audience who's just like, well, let me just say something. And he talked for like 20 minutes. And it was, it was, Man, that's, that's it's, a lot. it's a lot, it's a lot but it's a lot of enthusiasm and I really like it. Um, but anyways, iPad and iPhone, Missouri Public Library, they always do these kind of things where if you are, um, electronic illiterate, they do a lot of these classes and stuff to help people with iPads and iPhones. My favorite one is personally the Excel ones. So you got to look out for those ones coming up. For Samsung. Because then you, you know, be people who always lie on their resume says like, I'm proficient in Excel. Because everyone just says that. That's like the one thing that you put on your resume. Just. I know how to use Google Docs. Yeah, Google Docs is like the best. Yeah. Like really. I don't know why people use Microsoft Word anymore. Sorry, sorry, Bill Gates. <laughs> Nobody cares about Windows 95. Bad day, Bill. Or Windows XP 99. Please don't get me started yeah, on that. Google's just so convenient, you know. Yeah, it's it's internet based. Yeah. So if you don't have the internet, you're 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 in trouble there. Yeah. All right. Sorry. Fundamentals of drawing, lifelong learning center. Uh, you know, like the Dickinson Lifelong Learning Center. You got Re Learning Center at Red Willow. All these places, but this is a fun way to learn how to draw. 
it's basically kind of teaches you the fundamentals of drawing. This course is for you. Uh, they will cover the basics of drawing with easy and simple techniques designed for success. It's forty-four dollars for this class. Um, so they're keeping the fun and fundamentals. So that's the deal. Rent wise, you're a renter. Yeah. Renting workshop at the Missoula Food Bank and Community Center. Um, they teach you how to uh, how your credit score impacts renting, how to improve your credit score from renting, common reasons for renting rejections and how to move past them, uh, saving goals and overcoming uh, renting barriers. A lot of times you have to have good credit to even begin renting an apartment, but you need, how do you build credit if you can't rent an apartment? There's uh, a lot of things in place, but um, that's just something that they're going to help you do at the Missoula Food Bank and Community Center. We went the double deposit route. Yeah. So none of us have like credit cards or yeah. anything or own. But your credit is building through your rent. Every, oh, it is? Yeah. Every time you oh. pay rent, every time you have a regular payment, okay. that builds credit. And that basically proves in your credit score, because Austin, you know Austin, he comes here yeah. to MCAT. He, he, he played St. Patrick the last, uh, last year at our uh, St. Patrick's Day Parade, which I'll talk about a little yeah, bit yeah. later. Um, he talked about, I was like, what's the point of credit? I'm just like, the credit is to prove that banks are willing to put money down yeah, yeah. for you to pay them back with interest. <laughs> okay, well, now I'm more wise to my rent. Yeah, rent is, rent is really good, it builds credit. Yeah. If you're late, your credit suffers. Yeah. And I did yeah. that. Yep. So, Wild World of Bugs Club, switching gears from renting to talking about bugs, which pretty printers can live anywhere. Um, if you have a bug enthusiast at home or you love bugs, um, then they're at the Missoula Insectarium is launching an after school club for kids who are interested in all things bug science and exploration. Um, through the course of the Wild World of Bugs, they'll play games, create art projects, conduct experiments, and more. This is an exciting opportunity for grades. Uh, K through five to learn, experiment, and create. So if you want to learn more information, you go to MissoulaButterflyHouse.org. KFGM, which is the uh, uh, local radio station, the community radio, Missoula's community radio station at the Union Hall, they're doing a resident, they do an art, artist residency series. The, the Agreeable Basis presents uh, artist residency series happening each and every Thursday from 7 to 10 p.m. in the Union Hall Ballroom. So it's on the second floor of the Union Hall. The KFGM artist residency series showcases Missoula's best and brightest up and coming bands with a few established acts joining the fray. Maybe uh, the band that you were talking about could get a residency up there and they can keep their equipment up there and play. Oh, yeah, we're, no, we're still working on some image stuff. Yeah, but they are always looking for um, new bands and up-and-coming artists, so it's a good way to get exposure, but also at the same time, get on the radio as soon as possible. Yeah, I have a friend that does that. Cool. All right, MCC's uh, The Spelling Bee, um, the Putnam um, County Spelling Bee is still going on. It's the final weekend to check it out. Uh, Thursday night is the beginning of the end of Putnam Spelling Bee um, as we... <laughs> As we go into the weekend, it's usually about $12, $15 if you go to MCT, depending upon where you want to sit. Um, but Spelling Bee, it's a, it's a play where a bunch of adults play kids, and it's a funny PG-13 type show. So they always have one of these PG-13 type shows at the MCT. Yeah. I always like them. They're, they always do really well. Yeah. Like the musicals, you know, you get what you pay for. But with these ones, these are kind of like, I don't know what to expect from these, but they always turn out to be very well done. And I, I know a couple of people in the show. Um, you and Buddy DeFranco Jazz Festival is another big thing that happens in the city of Missoula. It's been going on for mm, yeah. more than 40 years. Pretty much in the in the Missoula, bringing jazz and also inviting artists, um, well-known artists, um, uh, in the jazz circuit. I don't know if you know um, Alec uh, Schneller. He's going to be on trombone. He's a professional trombone player, and he's going to be with uh, accompanied by um, the UM Jazz Band One, which is the best jazz players in the city of Missoula, and top student musicians chosen from the daytime festival workshops. So pretty much all day, um, Thursday and Friday, um, all the high schools that have a jazz band will be going to the University of Montana, playing clinics, meeting with um, people like Alec S uh, Sneller on trombone, and yeah. just talking about all sorts of music. And they always have people who uh, critique, and also, they don't actually critique. It's not a competition. This is not a competition. It's a festival. A lot of times, a lot of the, uh, and one of the things that um, Lance Boyd, he was the original one who ran the show back in the day. He wanted to uh, kind of avoid that kind of competition, like who's the best band of all, by having a, a festival that's very 
ex that was very in inclusive. I want to say for oh, everybody. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I w I've been in. I was in the Sentinel Jazz yeah. Band, so I've been to a couple of those. I was in the um, Big very Sky High School Jazz Band, and we had a really good time. Yeah. Uh, and we also went to the All Northwest, All Northwest, just as our jazz band. We yeah. got a CD and everything. Sure. I haven't listened so. to that CD ever since we got it when I was in high school. So I don't know if I'm going to listen to it. I'm kind of oh, scared. Check it out. Yeah, I'm kind of yeah. scared. I I, th I have it in my box of memories. But anyways, it's uh, the oh. price. They have the big concerts on Thursday and Friday nights, and it's uh, uh, for students. It's ten dollars uh, a night or fifty dollars for a combo. If you're a senior, it's fifteen dollars a night or twenty five dollars for a combo. But if you're just a general public like myself, it's twenty five dollars a night with a forty dollars for both nights. So, Sweet. those are some of the things that are happening for your events. Um, let's talk about St. Patrick's Day. This Saturday, MCAT is going to be in the St. Patrick's Day Parade. Oh, you want to come? You want to hang out? Yeah, I'll come. Yeah. Oh, you sure. can be in the parade. You get it's paid. Saturday? Yeah, it's a Saturday. You get paid to be in the parade. Okay. Yeah, you just hang out. Uh, you come. Uh, just be here um, at 11. If, if we're not here, we're probably at the Red X's where we're going to be set up. Okay. Yeah, you can come join us. Um, yeah, for sure. Um, I am. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna do something very special. We're gonna do very something completely different than last year. I swear, if you dress up Austin as a leprechaun, I'm gonna lose it. What? No, Austin's not even gonna be there. Oh, like he has not even tried to get off of work or anything like that. Oh, okay. He hasn't requested any time off, so it's like, oh well, you snooze, you lose, and I, oh, that's what I told he was, him. He was in the last one, though. Yep. Said. Oh. He was he was St. Patrick's last year. I was St. Patrick's two years ago. I don't even know if he was St. Patrick. It was just a guy with Who's a robe Saint and Patrick a wig. This year. What? Who's St. Patrick this year? There's there, there, there's no official St. Patrick. Oh, okay. We just dressed up as and we just called ourselves St. Patrick's. And we, like literally, it had nothing to do with St. Patrick because we had a wig on, we had a robe on, and underneath that robe was the hoverboard, and we just roll around on the hoverboard in the downtown area, yeah, and then the have the tenth or eleventh kid ask to have your hoverboard for keeps, and it's like, no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, man, Barely this is my anymore, this really. is my generation exploding hoverboard. Yeah. <laughs> It's mine. Uh, yeah, I've had I'll, it since. I'll definitely show up for that, though. Yeah. So uh, come to MCAT 11. I mean, I'm gonna have to ditch the uh, parade in the mid in the midway because we're gonna be doing yeah. Saturday drop-ins every Saturday from should, 1 to 5 p.m. You should remind me about that too. Yeah. I'll, rem I will, I'll remind everyone again on Friday. But right. that's pretty much it for all you need to know what's happening. Um, I don't know any anything new happening that you know of happening in Missoula. Any uh, upcoming events that I I usually just kind of breeze by them. Let me think. Uh, Nah. Yeah. I check out the Wilma though. Yep, yeah, but I got to say congratulations to the Roxy Theater because they just got a, a big grant to uh, science on film. So they're going to be showing, showcasing some science on film and science on um, videos and stuff like that. Kind of yeah. like a, a thing that they'll be showing at the Roxy. So they got a good grant for it. But awesome. of course, once again, MissoulaEvents.net is your local resource for what's happening in Missoula. Hey, what's happening in Missoula? Um, you'll find out here. Yeah. There's just a bunch of things going on there. But I usually kind of bypass all the yoga because there's like 50 yoga um, <laughs> classes happening every week. I'm sorry. But you know, if you want to I'm not pro yoga. yoga. I'm not against yoga. I'm just yeah. like, there's just too much yoga. If you want to do some yoga, though, just check out MissoulaEvents.com. Wait, you should switch it over again. Yeah, there you go. Dot net. <laughs> yeah, yo. MissoulaEvents dot net. Yo. All right, cool. <laughs> it's a major loss for me. I can't believe I said dot com yeah so oh and also monday uh, was the oh actually yesterday sorry was the 30th uh birthday of the internet sick yeah I, so I internet is internet is pretty much as old as i am i'm not saying that i'm 30 or anything i'm still celebrating my anniversary of my 29th birthday all right <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I just love people who say that, and I want to be that person who says that. Oh, that's great. I yeah. call my apartment a uh, second floor attic, so, like, you know, <laughs> giving things different names is great. Yeah. Just to make them sound cooler. All right. So, um, show's over. Thanks for watching. <laughs> and I'm going to, well, that's it. I'm like, I want to thank you guys for joining me on my morning show. Um, uh, also, um, Josh. Thanks. Um, he's going to play us out. So, cool. without further ado, for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. I'm here and i'm josh yep and i'm gonna be playing uh, a little selection that i started off the show with uh, nice. a little bit from super mario galaxy so right. please thank enjoy. you enjoy take it off mm -hmm. 